what's up everybody welcome back to split equity i've got another tractor that i'm going to do a video on um we're not going to do too many tractors because i you know i don't want to just get redundant and have the same thing all the time but i thought i'd just do this one um it's a, a much better tractor than the murray that we did a bit like a full video on and of course i'm doing the john deere that i'll keep it for myself um this is a 98 craftsman gt which means it's a garden tractor um we'll get into a little more about why it's a guard called a garden tractor not just a lawn tractor standing right here in front of my uh rv camper whatever you want to call it um this is going to be a video coming up we're going to end up replacing the two uh axles on this um so stay you know stay tuned for that or subscribe for that i should say um but anyway, so the tractor is actually done as of right now. So you're gonna see the process of uh, going through it and you know figuring out everything that was wrong with it. This is it after we just cut the grass with it. So you'll see everything we did. Um, you know, so you can see it's a little dirty right now, but uh, it is a nice fully functioning tractor. Go ahead and uh, subscribe and uh, enjoy the video. All right, let's get started. We've got another tractor. Just picked this up yesterday for 125 bucks. It is a 98 Craftsman garden tractor. It's got the, the large rear, uh, rear wheel with the five lug nuts. Kind of the indication that it's a garden tractor over just a lawn tractor. You'll see like, GT as opposed to LT. Some of the newer ones I think say GT in like a 4000 or something like that. I don't know. It's actually in really good shape. Guy was asking 200 bucks for it. I asked, offered 100. We settled at 125. It was not running uh, when I saw it yesterday. He said he had not tried to run it this year. It came with his house that I, I'm not sure when he bought it, probably in the last year. And he has a, some kind of a John Deere that he uses. He uh, just wanted to get rid of this one. Literally all I did was put gas in it, a different battery in it, and the thing fired right up. Let's see if it starts, choke is on. Yeah, it right up. Yeah, so nice tractor. I actually really liked uh, riding around on this thing. And, and he said that he, you know it ran, but he just hadn't used it yet this year. Um, it is a hydro. It's a 46 inch deck. It has the hydro right here as opposed to the foot lever, which I don't really like as much. Um, just I guess it takes some getting used to. It does the hydro works great? It pulls hills better than anything else I've got around here. Um, some of that might just be these these rear tires. It has a Kohler engine, which I was gonna say, I know it had a label on there. I don't really know how true as far as like Kohler Pro. I mean, I guess this is like a Pro engine. Um, it does have hydraulic lifters, so you would not need to do any valve adjustments on this. So that's cool. Um, and it also, um, it's pressure lubrication, which basically means it has an oil filter. And I was able to put, I think that's a Honda oil filter size that I was able to put on there. So didn't have to pay anything for the oil change. Um, oil was at the right level, but it was really black. When I first started up, it, it was pretty tappy and it wouldn't make sense if it has hydraulic lifters, that that would be why. It does run really well now that the noise smoothed out. You rub this thing up, it sounds like a Harley V-Twin. The main issues I found with this, there's really nothing wrong with the tractor itself. And then over here, 
this is the deck off of it. That pulley right there is completely seized up. The other two are fine. All of these spin fine. Um, I ordered this one and this one because they are pretty noisy. This one is okay. Um, this one, all I'm doing is just trying to make it good enough to sell. Everything, I want everything to work. The blades were fine. I'm gonna, you know, pressure wash under here and I'll sharpen the blades. They're good enough for just flipping the thing, I think. <laughs> I'm looking at these, are some kind of weird blades. I'm not sure. It just has that one little end is the cutting, cutting part. I don't know. But, like I said, We'll put some kind of a sharp edge. I mean, really, it's just the very end of the blade that cuts anything anyway, so it's okay. Um, they'll be good enough. We'll just pressure wash all this up, get all the gunk off of here. Maybe I'll I'll hit it with some some paint. I'll probably definitely, since I got it off, I'll just give the the top a, a quick coat of paint. Just get rid of. Looks like they try to put some John Deere yellow over here. Um, but this is actually in pretty good shape. The wheels are okay. So overall, not, not bad at all. Um, quick update on a new mower that uh, I think will be probably like a $600 tractor by the time it's all said and done. This one tire is going flat here. That only holds air for about 30 minutes. So um, the guy said it was the valve stem. I don't know, we'll look at that and see, no big deal. The tire itself, I think will be okay. Worst case scenario, I'll put an inner tube in that. They just need to be cleaned. Stripped some of the parts off of the one. Uh, maybe I'll strip everything off of it. Probably not. I'll probably just do what I have to, have to replace and just give that a quick coat of probably black paint. This I use a lot. This works really good. Um, I painted my RV rims with this last year and I can actually show you um, how they look um, with no, you know, extra primer, no clear coat, no anything. Just, you know, a, a quick cleaning and a wipe down with some alcohol and this. They look really good. And I got some undercoating that we're gonna put on the bottom side of the deck just to try to keep, uh, have a little bit stronger barrier um, against you know all the debris and everything that's always hitting it, um, just to try to preserve that a little longer. Let me show you the how that paint looks. So these wheels I painted last year, they've been sitting out here in the winter time, you know, I mean, I'm just, I just brought a rag just to kind of wipe it down, but I mean, You can see that paint looks really good. Really looks, you know, uh, has a nice shine to it. And it's not, you know, I mean, it looks like a factory coating, but that stuff is pretty good. I definitely recommend that paint. This is a, a flip tractor. I'm not making this perfect. I'm just trying to make it look as good as I can for as little effort as possible. If I didn't have to take the deck off of this, I probably wouldn't have gone this far. But I'm already out here painting. Why not just give this one a quick little, you know, five, 10 minutes of actual elbow grease here. And it looks 10 times better than it did. It's all one color. 
you know, we didn't tape anything off. I just kind of, you know, gave the, the pulleys a little coat too. You don't want to be replacing two of those pulleys, but whatever. You know, it's harder to try to not hit them than it is just to hit them with a little bit of paint. Um, where they had sprayed the yellow paint over here, it didn't really stick too well. You know I sanded that a little bit. Um, that's okay, because that's mostly going to be covered by the chute. So, looks pretty good. That one is not going to be completely rebuilt, but it's going to be a, a Craigslist rebuild, I guess we'll say, or a marketplace rebuild. It's going to have the new parts that it absolutely needs, quick little coat of paint, throw it back on there, um, and that thing will be worth 600 bucks. probably sell it the same day. Got a couple new parts for the Craftsman GT tractor here. Got a new spindle. And it's funny, I just realized that this one here does not have a nut on it and I don't think it ever did because I painted it a little bit but this one comes with a new one I still have the old one for the old uh, spindle so I should be okay with that and I figure this way it'll be really obvious to see that I replaced some parts I you know, painted everything um, these two are going to get replaced I just leave it there so I don't forget where they go. Because they'll probably both fit on either way. So, new spindle. Some hardware for the blade. It's just been sitting outside in the rain, so I just kind of closed it off. sharpen these blades a little bit. At least try to get the, the very end of it sharp. These are really small. This is a 46 inch uh, three blade deck. So these are only like maybe, I don't know, 12, 14 inch blades. So they're really not, you know, I, I, get, I guess they're supposed to be like mulching blades because they, you know, they have like the two different levels. I'm not sure, but I did try to, you know, it's definitely sharp enough to cut some grass. These have um, this little like baffle thing that goes up underneath of each one. So we'll just reuse that. It does have new bolts though. So this is the one that was like totally seized. You can't turn it off. Totally seized up. These do not have any kind of grease fittings on them. I mean, not that anybody's ever gonna do it anyway. Put this nut over here on this one. It probably is just so seized on there that it's not coming off. I'm not really sure how it came off because I don't remember taking that off. I would have had no reason to take it off. There's some rednecks riding around on the I don't know, golf cart thing. What do we think these things are? I've just kind of been having this tray of random, randomness tools kind of floating around everywhere lately. It's got like a little bit of everything on them. No, of course that's not right. What is that? That's 11. Half inch? Yeah. Looks like it's a half.
These go between? Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, they don't. Because they have to. It's like splines on both of them. You can kind of tell when these things have like, you know, hit something where it like really stopped the blade because like they kind of have a little bit of like rounding out of the, the teeth. The, the one on the John Deere on the front was like that. I'm just going to go ahead and put it back on because I, I I don't make a habit of running over things, you know, like I don't really have rocks. I mean, occasionally I might run over a stick, but it doesn't jam the blades on me. I have done that, but it's, it's rare. At least for this yard, so. I don't think the other ones have a washer. I think it's just this one. Probably just put a double stack. And then I need my air impact for that. Let's see. Um, oh, yeah. This thing actually has two belts to run the deck, and one of them was good. We're still there. The other one was completely missing. The one that actually goes um, from the from these two pulleys to kind of rides up on the top one, and then goes up to the the uh, PTO clutch. That that was just totally missing. Just burned off, I guess, from the seized up pulley. And that's the one I haven't gotten, so I can't actually put it back together just yet, but I figured I'd just reassemble this. I can put the, the new deck belt on around everything, and then once I get that one, I can just throw the whole thing back on. So, I got these two, I got this one, that's just that, and this one to match that. These are not Sten, but 810. Don't tell me that wasn't on purpose. Um, these are eBay, obviously. Again, this is just a flip tractor, but they probably will work just fine. Oh, there it is. <laughs> There's the nut right there, for whatever reason. I, I guess I did take it off, but I don't know why. Or maybe I, took, maybe I had to take it off to get the belt off. These still turn, but they were, they were pretty noisy. So I think these were like 10 or $11 each for, that's spinning on my finger, that's why it sounds like, it. these are good, these don't make any noise at all. And at least this way, it's like everything is nice and black, and then you got these like, random gold things, but at least I can be like, hey look, you got a you know, brand new spindle, two new pulleys, everything else was checked, everything was good. I mean, this thing's going to get way more attention than any other tractor on the marketplace, at least in my area. don't think that's a half inch. No. These have a, a square out. Like a square insert, whatever you call it. Oh yeah. It's slightly wobbly, but not too bad. I mean, yeah, just a lawnmower, it's okay. Doesn't make any noise though. Kind of push up on the bottom and it'll go in that that square groove and hold it in place all right so these are trash this is trash but it's metal so i'm starting to accumulate some metal stuff i gotta take all this to work and dump it in the metal bin just in case anybody's curious the the deck rebuild kit for this was only a 
$100. Um, it was $150 for the John Deere. I have no idea why, because it's pretty much the same stuff. It was three blades, three spindles, uh, three idler pulleys, um, and then it only has two anti-scalp wheels. Um, but for whatever reason, it was only $100. So, you know, if it was something I was going to keep, I would have just probably done that. But since I was just trying to just do the minimum that put everything back in good working order, you know, I think I spent probably like the belt that goes around the top two to the track to the the engine clutch uh, was $788. That's the one I haven't got yet. The spindle was $2834. The other belt, which is over there, um, the one that goes around the bottom pulleys to actually connect the blades, that was $1035. Um, this was $1095 and this was $1295. Yeah, so so far I've spent $82.83 in parts. Everything that I just said was $73.97. And I spent $8.86 um, for the one inner tube, one tire, which I already put that in. Um, it's the first inner tube I've ever put in, so I, I, me doing it was kind of comical. Um, I did it at work. There's videos of, on how to do it, so I, I'm not going to bother showing you that because, you know, uh, but it's in, it's holding air, both, both, the other tire already had an inner tube in it, so both, all the tires hold air now, $83 in parts, and I spent 125 so just over 200 bucks, 20, yeah, 207.83 total invested in the 98 Craftsman GT. I almost just want to keep it, you know, but I, I'll, I'll get all together, use it, see how I like it. Um, I was kind of towing my little uh, guard, uh, garden cart thing around the other day with it, just to just to use it. Handle hydromatic thing takes a little, or what do you call it, hydrostatic, takes a little bit of getting used to, but it has its advantages. You know, you just kind of stick it in that position and it'll stay there instead of having like, you know, hold your foot in the same position where it wants to always spring back. This will kind of, you just put it in a spot and just, you just leave it there. And it's kind of got like a dog leg shape. If you just push it to like the first position, that's like the grass cutting position. So you just kind of real quick and you're just right, right at the speed of kind of grass. Even though I normally am cutting grass as fast as I possibly can, so it doesn't really matter. Kind of like it, sounds pretty cool when it runs, but we gotta wait till we get the other belt before we can use it. But for you guys, the magic of editing, you're gonna be seeing it real soon here. As soon as I get the other belt, we'll throw it on and we'll put the deck back on the tractor. And I will I'll show you guys either on this one or the John Deere how to how to level the deck. Make sure everything is level. That's not right. Oh, maybe that. Maybe that. Okay, hold on. I think this is supposed to go on the bottom. Makes sense because none of these have none of the other ones have a washer on them. So I'm learning too here with these things. There you go. Now see that's a good spindle. That makes no noise whatsoever. The ones I put on the John Deere, you could hear them a little bit. I mean, it wasn't terrible. Perfect. Above. Give you new hardware to put this on. And I did actually undercoat this thing too. I don't know how long it's going to hold up. Probably not that long at all, but I, really, I just kind of pressure washed it and just scuffed it up a little bit before I put it on. But you know, at least it looks a little better for now. Alright, so 
same as the other ones you got I'm not sure what size this was then we'll find out you got a lock washer goes on first you got the large flat washer 916s yep beautiful perfect yeah I mean that, that one that's what they should be like no noise whatsoever so I'll have to keep that this brand I don't think there's any brand on the box yeah the box is just like that nothing at all yeah it, it's just kind of a no-name thing but that's the picture as far as like the company you know what they're Thing looks like um, <laughs> the brand is Auto Day Plus, so it sounds very Chinese, but it just goes to show you. I mean, there's just there are different grades of manufacturing that come out of China, just like there is in the United States. I mean, just because it's made in the United States doesn't mean it's good. I mean, you know, I don't want to start any wars, but just look at some of our cars, things are a little beat up. I don't really know what the purpose of those things are, but you put it back to be. Like it should be. Oh yeah, put this on. All right, so we've got the final piece to the puzzle. It was a belt. Everything else should have already been done. I think you guys saw that in the last video or the last uh, part of this video. So this belt is what actually runs from the PTO clutch back to this pulley or these three, oh, let's see. So this one should go around here. Well, we first got to get this one on here. I didn't have this one routed right. And I don't have my phone on me, which had the routing, but I think No sense. Uh, okay. Now yeah, it makes sense. Now it actually gets tight. It's just my mess of tools. Alright, 916. Can I use that to swing this? that like that yep it's just gonna loosen it that's a dumb design so how are you supposed to do that there's no way to Let's see if I can get this to clamp on here tight enough.
<sighs> I could just made it a reverse thread and you could just put a wrench on it or a socket on it and move that over, but they didn't do any of that. I guess I can try a pry bar. Scratch up my new paint. can't actually that is a dumb design could have very easily put something on that to allow you to swing the tension around I guess um, maybe I have it around this one first and then stretch it over one of these Clearly it's tight. That should just freewheel on top of it. Yeah, so that's tight. And then this belt, much thicker than the other one. This is like a 5 8 belt. Let's say what the 5 8 by 85. So this one. Needs to go. I'm just gonna have to go like that around that side. And let's see, can that squeeze in there? Yeah. Okay. And that goes up under the. Why does that not seem right? I cut off the picture of that belt. loops around and comes back it loops around that and then it must do something like that but that's gonna rub there that can't be maybe once there's tension on it, it won't I guess when it has tension, this is going to be more forward. I guess that's it. Let's see what we got. slide under get the belt over the PTO clutch and then kind of roll it back and then these is, this just has like a few of these um, hangers coming down that have to attach in a few places. So this one obviously goes back here. I'm also going to want to put the deck all the way down. Um, let's see, that's this one. That's down. I was trying to be organized and put all the parts for this thing in this one bag. So, this is the part that goes in the front. And I got my clips right here. I'm going to 
don't remember is which si I think they're all I think they all might be the same size sort of well, let's see here I'll get that one in and let's put this front one in well I know that goes in one of these holes Okay, I guess it's just off center. That can't be right. How's that gonna fit? I guess we'll have to put a few more on to see what what lines up with what. It's been like two weeks since I've done this, or more. It's a problem when you're waiting for parts forever. You can't remember what where everything went. This just kind of has these. I don't know if you guys see this, but it just has this like double hang thing, and there's a mount there, and then a mount on the other side. So this is the part that goes to the deck, and this is the part that goes um, on the tractor. So I gotta get that like over that, and then over this side. That side's in. I'm gonna get the front and the other side. Real smart craftsman putting these things on the inside where you can't see anything. And you know what? These are a little bit thinner right here. I bet you these are the ones that are supposed to go on these inside ones. This one got a little bent though. Let's see if I can. Bend it back. Should be alright. Nope. Just wants to be a total pain. I'm trying to put it. There's a hole right there, but it's kind of like a little bit at an angle. So it doesn't want to lay flush and both sides, like this side is kind of, this piece is pushing this way and, that, and that's pushing that way. So it's not like it's kind of crooked, like the deck is not crooked. I think maybe this shows, yeah, look at those brackets. I think those brackets are just bent. So I might just see if I can kind of just like bend these brackets back a little bit. Now that, I, now that I can look at it. So this thing probably has run over a few rocks or stumps or something in the past and caused these to get a little bent. So let's see if I can. Tweak that a little bit. Did that do anything? I did get in. Okay, that one is already in. All right, so all that's left is this guy, which I think must go in that hole. And then it must go in here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
that clip needs to be tightened up a little bit. That one's in. deck is fully installed it's all it's all the way raised up right now but it's definitely got a pretty good upward rake in the back so I'll show you how to level it this gizmo right here is a, a cutting height gauge and the way it would work is you slide it under and you put it right up against the flat part of the blade that's actually where the, the cutting is going to show you. So that right there is showing that that blade is about, you know, a little, little over four and a half inches off the ground. So that's pretty high. We're probably going to get it around probably like three and a half. So the way this one kind of works is it has this little dial over here. You set this where you want it to drop to and then you have like the actual setting right here so I, I guess those are supposed to be inches like one to six I'm not really sure so right now I have it pretty much where it goes like all the way down so we're gonna probably have it where it stops it like that so I think you just basically twist it twist it clockwise to go up So now it only goes down to there. So right like that, it's like right, like right in the middle of three. That's basically got us right at three and a quarter. So that would probably be inches. So what we gotta do now is get it so this whole thing is level front to back and side to side. So we know this side. And you want it to be a little bit higher in the back than you do the front. I think you want it to be like a quarter of an inch higher in the back than you do the front. So what I'm going to do first is check to see what the other side looks like. So we know this one, you want the side to side to be pretty much the same. So this is right at three and a quarter on this side. And I've got the blade kind of like right, pretty much right in the middle. We'll just put it right at the middle part. We'll get it to where it's like perpendicular like that. And ideally I should probably be on something like concrete that's completely flat, but it's okay. We're gonna just go with this. So we're right at three and a half there. Alright, so it's right there. So we're actually <laughs> this side is actually at two and a half inches. So this side is a whole inch lower than that side. The way you fix that is this right here is your adjustment so this is for the left side of the deck there's one just like this on the other side you basically just turn this nut it the more you tighten it it's going to draw it up and it's going to pull the deck up so we're going to adjust it to be the correct height both sides so i've got this basically right like at three and a half on there it's kind of like in the middle so the other side looks right so we're going to pull this side up to where we get the the gauge at three and a half this is pretty similar to the other mowers that i've done they, they all have like a slightly different way of doing it although the john deere is pretty much like this all right looks like it's a 14. can i even turn this thing I guess. I'm going to go to the next one. 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 I
Yeah, we're at like three. All right, so we're really close. It's like within an eighth of an inch. So now I'm gonna concentrate on the front to back. So we're like at three, 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 and an eighth. It's, you know, sometimes your blades might be slightly bent too, so you might want to check both, like spin around, and check the other side of the blade. Seem like they're both the same though. Yeah, it's like right at three. I guess we'll just go up a little bit more. We'll, we'll try to get it three and an eighth, and we'll try to get the front three. That way, it'll just be just a little bit higher. You know, you split. The, you know, the back should be three and a quarter. If the middle is three and an eighth, and the front is like three. I guess I should actually check to see if the thing actually works before I start doing all this, but whatever. Didn't move at all. Oh, it came off the blade. Yeah, all right, that looks pretty good. It's pretty close to three and an eighth. Good enough for me. So, Gonna be a little harder in the front. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and crank up the front a little bit to begin with. I can clearly see that it's lower. The front one is this one right here. And that's a bigger size. Let's we'll see if we can just put a socket on that one. All right, now, the three quarter fits pretty good. I'm not sure if this thing is metric or standard, but it's basically the same thing. Um, it's a it's a lock nut itself, so it'll kind of be it's gonna be stiff to turn because it's got like a nylon ring in it. So, oh boy. No, actually, you know what? This one has a locking nut, like a jam nut on the back side that I'm gonna have to loosen, and hopefully it's the same size. Let's see if the three quarter wrench fits over that. Yep. Yeah, I don't think that's been moved in about 23 years, how old this thing is. Jesus. Yeah, we need some more persuasion. Yeah. Say bust your knuckles for a reason. Now it's loose, you just turn that nut on the inside. I'm gonna back it down quite a bit, like all the way. And then we're gonna tighten this one up until we get it to something that looks close ish. So it's pulling this rod, which is in turn pulling up on the. So now, let's see if we can find one of these blades. Okay, there's one right in the front already. And right now we're at two and a half inches, so we're gonna we need to crank it up some more. I think most everybody's lawnmower punch crooked as hell because nobody ever does this. That looks pretty perfect. Let's see if you can see in there. But got that right at three. And that's resting. I'm sure I'm not gonna be able to get you in there to see that, but it's resting right on the front tip of that blade. I'm gonna get that nut locked down. And then we can go ahead and try this thing out. What? What's wrong? Did you 
you barking at? Huh? What's you barking at? Yeah, it's a belly boy. Gonna be on camera too. You just want attention, that's all. Huh? Yeah, but anyway, so that kind of wraps it up for this one. I think I need to adjust the blade a little bit more, but it's pretty good running garden tractor. So I think that pretty much wraps it up. Alright, so thanks for following along guys. <laughs>